All right, it's just putting the stream up on YouTube and then we're going to hit it. Thanks for your patience, guys. All this technology is so much fun. All right, it's just putting the stream up on YouTube and then we're going to hit it. Thanks for your patience, guys. Okay, here we go. All right, guys, uh, thank you for joining us today for our live stream. This is going to be a really fun event. At least at least I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. What we're going to do is um, we are going to cover a lot of material. And really the main focus of today is for me to be able to address as many questions as I can uh, with these two new lights that have come out, the Rotolite uh, Neo 3 and the AOS 2. So uh, we have uh, the CEO of uh, uh, Rotolite with us, Rod Gammons, as well as some other great photographers. And so what we're going to do is uh, do our absolute best to answer any and all questions that we can. Um, it's been a lot of fun to use these lights. I, I got to say it's been absolutely incredible. Um, I've literally gone across the pond from, from uh, California over to uh, England to shoot with these, and I've been shooting with them. Uh, all throughout uh, parts of the United States here as well um, in the meantime. And so um, the real point of this, this exercise today is for me to be able to share my experiences and the practical real world applications of using these lights, because if there's anything that I want to do, I want to communicate to photographers out there um, how they can use these lights to their benefit. So um, please ask questions. I'm going to be uh, completely forthright with you guys on my experiences with the lights and go from there. So with that being said, I'm going to share my screen here. Everybody mute yourself. Can I have this? <laughs> Stay muted, guys. Okay, can you guys see my screens? All right, cool. So again, this is how to use the uh, the, the uh, AOS 2 and the, the Neo 3 guys. And uh, we're going to have a really good time uh, talking about this today. Um, our itinerary is, 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 very, is very straightforward. We're going to talk about the features of the lights. We're going to talk about how the lights can benefit your work. Again, the practical applications of the lights. Um, we're going to talk about accessories. And then we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to just do a question and answer session for you. When it comes to the features of the lights, guys, um, they do continuous, they do flash touchscreen, RGB, uh, filters, special effects. One thing that I really love about these lights more than anything is that they really give um, us the opportunity as creators to create some really cool content in an all-in-one solution. Um, the way that I would look at the, the way that I would look at these lights is really pretty simple. Um, I would take, uh, I would just look at the Neo3 as a mini AOS2. The Neo3 is really a mini AOS2. They're completely identical in regards to uh, what they can do from a touchscreen standpoint, RGB standpoint. Um, the, only really the only real difference is that, um, you know, the Neo3 is smaller than the AOS2. And with the Neo3, um, you're not going to uh, have the, the, the spread of light as wide as you will on the AOS2. Other than that, um, they're really identical lights. Just one is a smaller version than the other. And that's different than what we've had on the lights previously. Both of them flash, both of them flash much brighter than they do, uh, than they perform in continuous mode. And, uh, and they really uh, produce some incredible results as we're gonna share with you here. 
Um, when I went, when I first went to England and started using the lights, it's funny. I ran into Rotolite headquarters and, and met, up, met up with Rod. He gave me the lights. I took a look at them. And the very first thing that um, I did was I ran outside with the light. <laughs> he wanted to show me all the bells and whistles and everything, which is, which is totally understandable. But my main concern was I wanted to see what these lights can really do from a power standpoint. So um, when we first got the opportunity to shoot with them, I went outside and started playing with them in continuous mode. And I'm going to show you shots in flash as well. Um, the, the shots you're looking here at here of the model Andrada are in continuous mode at one five thousandths of a second F14 ISO 100. Um, and it really shows you the, uh, the power that these things are putting out. Um, they do put out a tremendous amount of power compared to their predecessors. So if you're comparing this to an AOS-1 or an EO-2, um, the power output on these lights is significantly brighter. The other thing that you'll notice when you look at these lights is the actual construction of the, the uh, front of the lights and the actual LEDs is very different than their predecessors as well. Um, and it actually uh, is one of the main reasons it provides such uh, uh, so much more power. Um, we're going to talk about battery life, but uh, but they do use the same batteries for all of the AOS. Uh, you know, if you have an AOS or an Innova Pro 2, if you have any of those V-mount v batteries, they're going to use the same batteries. On the Neo 3, it is getting away from the double A's and getting into lithium batteries. And uh, one thing that you should know if you if you are buying the Neo 3 is that the batteries, um, they're because of the fact that they flash, it's really going to be advantageous for you to use the batteries that Rotolite sells. And I'm not trying to sell you Rotolite batteries. The, the reason I'm saying that is because all of the, they're Sony NPF batteries. That's, that's what they use. The only problem is with the other batteries, um, they're, not, they're not engineered to do flash. So if you're only going to use these lights in LED mode, then you can use any of the you know NPF kind of Sony batteries that are out there that you, that a lot of videographers and stuff use. However, if you are going to use um, flash mode, which a lot of us will, then you're going to want to try. You're going to want to get the the Rotolite batteries for the Neo Three because uh, they are engineered differently to handle the capacity that is put on the battery once they are firing in flash mode. So just be please be aware of that. Um, but uh, what the shot that you're looking at here is of Andrada. You can see that the, the AOS 2 um, uh, there and you uh, on the right. And then if you're looking at the picture on the left, you see that blue streak coming in. That's actually another AOS 2 uh, firing, uh, not firing, but providing light in RGB mode. Um, now, I'm going to be honest, um, you know, when you guys go outside and you use the, the any Rotolite product, I've been saying this for years, but it really is true. And when people struggle, um, it's because I don't think they use Rotolites properly. And that's just the truth. And that's true of any piece of gear. It's not just Rotolites. Um, nine times out of 10, when we're not getting the results that we, that we want, it's because of user error. People will watch my videos and say, oh, well, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I didn't get, uh, I'm not getting the same stuff as Jason. Well, you're probably not using it in the same way. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying I'm not faking any results. You just have to use it the way that I use it. If you want the results or similar results to what I do, you have to use it in the same way. And I say that in that you'll see me use a lot of modifiers when it's, when it's, uh, um, uh, when I'm indoors or it gets darker, but yesterday I did shoots in LA and I was out there with, um, you know, some of the guys, one of the guys that was on here, uh, with me, Chris, and uh, he says, you know, when do you use modifiers? And I said, I just keep it really simple. I don't really use modifiers at all when I'm shooting outdoors with rotolites. I don't need them. And so when people ask about watt seconds in a comparison between traditional flash and one of the rotolites, it's not a fair comparison because of the fact that you have to modify the other lights so much. It's not a sales pitch. It's just the truth. You're looking at the shots. When I shoot bare bulb, um, outside on the rotolites, it looks fantastic. It just does. When I shoot bare bulb with a monolite outside, it doesn't look fantastic. Um, I can also tell you very candidly that, you know, I've been doing shoots uh, in the desert, for example, um, with a monolite, a 600 watt second monolite. And sometimes it's so bright, I'll try to shoot that bare bulb as well, well, because I really try to get that exposure that you see in the clouds behind the subject. So, um, 
this is what you're going to expect from a continuous standpoint on a knee on an EOS two from a Neo three. And I am going to show you an, uh, there is a Neo three picture in here, um, that we did in continuous mode as well. And so you're going to see that as well, but, uh, I just love this shoot that I did with the Neo three. This is with a, a, a great model named Danya, but, um, this is at one one hundredth of a second F two ISO 100. But one thing I want to really relate to you about this particular image is if you look this really helps you uh, helps you to understand the power that is the additional power that's coming out of these lights. When I posted the shot, somebody was like, oh, I could have done that with a Neo 2. And I'm like, you're telling me you could have put a Neo 2 and put it reflecting into a uh, an umbrella, a huge parabolic umbrella and had it push all that light back out. There's no way, there's no way it would have done that. I'm telling you, I've used Roto lights more than anybody. Even the people who own Roto light, I guarantee you I've used the lights more than they do. There's no way you could have done that. So if you look at the picture on the left, if you look at the settings, the settings are for the ambient guys. So if you've ever been to one of my workshops or anything else, or watched a lot of my videos, you'll know that one thing that's huge for me is using these lights in a way that gives me the ability to, um, exposed to the background, but then use my lighting for my subject. And you can see that here. So um, we're going to talk about modifiers and everything else down in the presentation as well. But but just keep that in mind that that's a big deal when you are using these lights is 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 um, to understand how to use them properly. Um, so in a situation like this with the parabolic umbrella, it actually worked out fantastic. Um, and uh, it really painted that light. So um, if you haven't been watching some of the videos I've been putting out recently, I would implore you to do so because what I've really tried, what I am really trying to do is to show you how to use these because I want you guys to get great results out of this. I want it to be something that's very beneficial for you. So let's talk about flash. Okay. This is um, when I was in the UK, this is a, a model named Selena and uh, we went out and this is the, this is the first time I started using flash with the Rotolite products. The picture on the left is no flash. The picture on the right is with flash. Um, and so it shows you the difference between the two. Here's a shot where I really tested it with the sun. So this is at one eight thousandths of a second F14 ISO 100. Um, and I was I posted a production shot of this yesterday, but I was sitting on the ground. And what I did was I was shooting up to really try and make the shot more difficult. Anytime I've tested prototype gear with any company, Sony, Rotolite, whoever, um, camera stores, whatever it is, I try to put the, the, the piece of gear to its max. I try to stretch it and see how far it can go because I'm testing the creative limitations of that gear. So obviously the picture on the left is no flash. The picture on the, on the right is with flash. That's at eight thousandths of a second F14. This is the AOS2. So it really shows you um, what you really can do with these lights when you um, when you use them properly. Again, if you try if you go outside and try to use these lights with a huge Bowens mount modifier, it's not going to give you those the results that you want. But you don't need to is the point that I'm really getting at. Uh, another comment that I got um, on Facebook recently was somebody said, I'm not seeing sharp edges on the shadows. Um, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it's just looks, it's, I'm not seeing that real difference between highlights and shadows. Well, clearly you can see here. And I responded back and I said, well, that's because that shot wasn't in flash. <laughs> so you have to understand everything before you, before you make those comments. If you look at the picture on the right, you can clearly see a lot of shadow coming in. And that's very important because it shows you the power that is, uh, that is being produced by these lights. It really gives you the ability to see that. Good morning, sir. Um, another comment I got. And again, when I say comments, I'm really, I've been really watching what you guys out there are writing. I'm really trying to do my best to, um, to answer those questions. And a lot of things, uh, so a thread started getting uh, going on saying, Hey, what about just like normal stuff? Like Good not all of us go morning, to these exotic locations and do all that kind of stuff. And so it's I went Monday. out yesterday to a photo shoot and we just popped up a gray backdrop, a portable gray backdrop. We literally, um, pinned it or need, tied sir? it to the top of a, a, a water pipe <laughs> uh, above uh, the studio there in LA. 
This is the AOS 2 in flash mode. Fair and this field. is reflecting back into a silver umbrella. So um, oh. I did this on purpose. I wanted you to see gotcha. the output okay. of the light, and I wanted you to see the shadow on the background. I wanted you to see what it would do. Also, keep in mind, this is in a, it's in a fairly bright studio. Um, we did end up closing the, those shades later on, but at this point in the, the process, we hadn't done that. So uh -huh. um, for those who are trying to use these lights, and I'm going to show you other shots as well. For those that are trying to use these lights for more corporate headshots and things like that, um, you really can okay. do that with these lights. You really can. Um, from a very practical standpoint, and I'm going to show you the flash on the Neo 2, from a very practical, okay. or Neo 3, um, you really can. Um, okay. Um, it, let me see. Is there, do we have people who are being noisy here? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um on the Neo 3. Okay, so this is a practical application. This is a shoot that I did yesterday with a model named Elena. Mm -hmm. um, my, my man, Chris, was there with us. Um, this is the Neo 3. This was this is with the Neo 3. Now, this is really pushing the Neo 3 as yes, hard as, as... Huh? Okay, this... This is pushing okay. the light as as far as it could possibly as far as it could possibly go. This is the Neo three guys. This is at one five thousandths of a second, f one four, um, and uh, it's really <laughs> it's really giving us the ability to see what the the light can do. If you really want to use a lot of flash outdoors in very sunny conditions, you're going to want to use the AOS two. Uh, the Neo three. As, this is what you're going to get out of the Neo three. The picture on the left is of Elena with um, no flash and the picture on the right is is with flash i just love it when people can't mute themselves <laughs> friends please for the love of god mute yourselves <laughs> All right. Um, all right, guys, I'm trying to mute, but everybody's popping up at different times. Good Lord. All right. Well, this is one five thousandth of a second F one four ISO one hundred guys. This is um, this is this is shooting like I said earlier at bare bulb with everyone there, and um, it uh, it gives you the ability to see exactly what. I have no idea who that is. I can't see it. All right. Fred, you need to mute your thing. All right. This is Flash with the Neo 3 in a studio environment, guys. This gives you the ability to see, again, this is the Neo 3. This is doing the same thing. This is of the model Elena. This gives you the ability to see the uh, the Neo 3 flashing into a uh, an umbrella. This is a, a silver reflective umbrella, again, against a gray backdrop. So um, when people ask, hey, can I use these lights, again, for corporate headshots or stuff, <clears throat> indoors, the Neo 3, uh, you know, is going to do anything that you want it to do, anything that you want it to do. Now, I will say this flash here, the Neo 3 um, uh, outdoors, the one that the, this, this, this shot here, this is, this was at, well, what time did we start shooting? This is around 1230, one o'clock in the afternoon. It's the absolute brightest part of the day. There's zero clouds in the sky. This is in Los Angeles. So when you are actually um, out there, guys, um, this is what you can expect to get out of a Neo 3 outdoors. This is what you expect to get from a Neo 3 indoors. Um, and we're going to show you some other shots and, and share that with you as well. But I just want you guys to understand that from a practical standpoint, I can get pretty much anything that I want from an AOS 2 um, indoors or outdoors. Almost anything that I want. And I, 
I only hesitate to say that because there are times even with um, there are times even with a um, a 600 watt second mono light, I still don't get enough light because I'm always trying to get so much out of my background. So it's not always a simple matter of just saying, oh, I can just up my light because anytime that you try to up the watt seconds on a light on a traditional mono light, you have to also up your modification to be able to handle that harshness of light. Um, but from a corporate headshot standpoint, wedding standpoint, you know, the Neo 3 would be something that I would absolutely use a lot. Um, the AOS 2 would be the one light that if I could take one light anywhere for anything um, or no, no, no piece of gear will do anything or everything. That just should be, let's just be honest about that. Um, whether it's a camera, lighting product, whatever it is, but um, the AOS 2 would be the one that I would take anywhere um, because it would do the vast majority of what I would need it to do. Um, even and even as you can see here that it that neo 3 is putting out a lot of light if you look at the shadow on the back the background there of the model elena it really provides a lot of of light especially in flash mode if you guys have watched the cowboy videos um the rgb is really awesome on these and um and if i would really really um you know, invite you to go watch that video. This this particular image here is where we really lit up a saloon in a very, very dark town where um, they had, we had oh, what, three AOS 2s and three Neo, three Neo 3s to illuminate this and really make it our set. And the really cool thing about the RGB guys is you can match the exact color and uh, by, a, by a, a number. So if you wanna have your color accuracy perfect and do a, a shot similar to this, this is where that RGB and be able to match it perfectly with, with everything really comes into play. Um, you have some really beautiful reds there. So what, what I did was took three Neo 3s, one on top uh, on the balcony there, and then I took two on the sides to come out of the windows. And then um, I used a, uh, an AOS 2 inside to illuminate the entire building way back in the stairwell. Then I put an AOS 2 behind the cowboy to illuminate him for rim light. And then we used an AOS 2 inside of uh, the illuminator to be able to light him from the front. Now, yesterday, again, this is going from big, huge kind of a production to a very simple production. Uh, yesterday, when we went out and, and did this shoot, this isn't, an, an, again, a simple setup to try to show what you can do in a very simple environment. This is of a great model mate named Minerva. And uh, what we did is we took that great background and uh, this is a Neo 2 that's uh, flashing her from the uh, key light and from a, a rim light, not even a rim light, from an accent lighting, um, we used the AOS 2 to, and we could have done a, a Neo 3 as, as the back as well, but we used the uh, AOS 2 and in RGB mode to RGB flash it and turn the background red. So I'm, I'm, I just shot this last night. I haven't had a chance to even really <coughs> go through all the images, but I'm very excited to share. Uh, the, you're going to see videos come out on this. We really had a great time and the shots turned out great. But as you can see, guys, there, there's, there's a lot of applications for all of these things that are on the lights. From a filter standpoint, again, just like on the Titan line, and what I love again is that, you know, Rotolite really has taken all of the advantages and the innovations from the Titan lineup of lights, and they've moved them into the Neo 3 and the AOS 2. Um, we, when we did this cowboy shoot, for example, I chose one of the filters that comes in the, uh, that comes built into the touchscreen of the lights. And I put, uh, if you watch the cowboy video, you'll see this. Um, and I put that under, uh, behind him to his back, to his right. And then we shine the light up to catch the underside of the brim of his hat to, to make it look like that sunset, you know, like that, the old Clint Eastwood kind of cowboy movie. And so um, I will tell you, as it relates to the touch screen, I really don't even use those red knobs. So you can completely use the AOS 2 and the Neo 3 without even using those red knobs. You don't have to hit the two buttons to turn it into flash mode. <coughs> They're kind of just there for analog purposes if you're an analog kind of a person, but you don't need them. 
um, unless there's something that I'm unaware of, but I don't use them. <laughs> so it is funny when I go to, when I first got them, I would go to, you know, use them like I would the old Neo, Neo 2 or AOS 1, but you don't need to. So I'm just letting you know that the touch screen is very easy to use it. And, uh, you know, the, the ability to be able to move the power up on it and do everything very quickly really is kind of a game changer. And so, um, you'll love the touch screen, but, but it, the filters come with it and, uh, it's, it, I just love using the stuff. I really do. Let's talk about accessories. Okay, this is um, this is a shot of a, of Selena. Now this is the dome. So I get a lot of questions about the domes on the lights. Now one recommendation I would make to you out there is this: if you are buying one of these lights, um, probably the best thing that you could buy that would modify the light without reducing a lot of light output would be the dome. Um, I personally would take the dome everywhere that I would use these lights. Um, and the reason for that is because of the fact that um, it's, it, it attaches very easily on the Neo three, it's a magnet. And then on the AOS two, it actually, uh, you, you, you uh, tie it down, but it's very quick. Um, I don't have a lot of images of this because I broke the dome. I <laughs> the dome is a DG because these are, these are prototypes. Uh, I don't have a lot of images to share before and after because I broke it. <laughs> and so I only share that to let you know that that's why I haven't put out more stuff on that. But the dome actually, you know, I shot it for about a half day before, unfortunately, dropping it. But the, the final versions are going to be very durable. There's not going to be a problem with it. It's going to be very easy to use. But this dome really makes a difference um, and it's, it's, it cuts very little light, but it takes that it takes any edge off. So I would use these domes a lot for indoor use would really be where these would come into play. So uh, use these domes indoors. Um, I don't know. Maybe if it's cloudy outside, I would use the dome. But again, guys, if you want to get the most out of these lights. Um, you don't need to use that modification when you're shooting in sunny conditions outside. If you try to do that, you're going to not, you're not going to get the results that you want to see. Um, and so, uh, but these domes do make a big difference, a big difference. And one thing I really like about it, and I've always liked about the road lights is the fact that with, um, you don't need a lot of modification. And so that gives you the ability to get your light closer to your subject, which is inherently going to be softer light. And it gives you the ability to shoot at wider angles, you know, wider angle lenses because you don't have a huge modifier that's in your frame. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this. Um, it makes a big difference when you do it the right way. When you do need to modify your lights, again, my most recent video uh, with Danya in this red room suite down in Los Angeles, it goes through how I use umbrella bracket modifiers to really, um, um, soften the light when i'm indoors and again you know when i did the shoot yesterday one of the guys that was on there with that was there with me chris was asking me about it and i said look guys it's, you keep it simple when you go indoors is when you modify the light with roto light um and you would do that the same with honestly with flash the the brighter it is the less modification you use the darker it is the more modification that is required if you're not using a lot of modification in darker environments you're going to get very hard lights and you're not balancing your light between your background and your subject so if you really want to get the best results you got to modify that light and what i always do is um, you start with the biggest modifier that your light can handle to really soften and wrap that light so um, this is what i did here um, and just as something as a way to really show what you can do if you look at the picture on the left you'll see the picture of Donya there with uh with the smaller softbox and uh but but with that smaller softbox this light again and this is all covered in this video go watch it guys it really is very informative the 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 light on the left is actually facing into the um, the modifier, which really helps to soften that light and spread it. You, you just keep in mind, you always need to spread light if you want it to be nice, soft, beautiful wrapping light. So again, picture on the right shows her with um, that huge umbrella and the picture on the left shows her with the small one. So um, you guys, the, the, here's, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you show you ways to, to modify this light, to get these lights and to not have to go spend a trillion dollars on new modifiers. That's honestly very annoying. And so uh, this gives you the ability to really modify that light in a way that is um, 
cost effective because let's face it, umbrella brackets are everywhere. You can buy, you can go anywhere and buy an umbrella bracket, go anywhere and get an umbrella, a, a shoot through umbrella. That's you're going to see more videos on shoot through umbrellas and all that kind of stuff. So it really gives you the ability to, to get some great stuff there. Okay, so here's here's a few shots in continuous mode that I did it in the the old West Town with Francesca. This is the um, this is the Neo three on the left, and that's at one four hundredth of a second f one four ISO one hundred, and the picture on the right is at one thousandth of a second f one four ISO one hundred. Um, these lights put out a lot of power, and that power draws a lot from the battery. So I know in the past, you know, we're used to using roto lights in continuous mode for two three plus hours uh, at 100%. That is not going to be the case with these lights, guys. You pretty much have the same size lights, um, but, you, you know, you, but you're putting out a lot more power and so that you're going to pull more from the battery. So if you expect to go out and shoot all day, when I do one of my shoots, like when I've been out with the Neo 3s or the AOS 2, they're about the same. It's almost an hour that you'll get if you're pushing these lights at full power in continuous mode, you're going to get about an hour, maybe a little bit less out of the batteries from um, on these lights. That's just that's just what it is, guys. That's you're you're it's like a car. You're pushing a lot more horsepower, so it's going to use more gas. Um, so what you have to look at is realistically how much and how long are you going to use these lights? And if you're going to use them at full power, one thing that I've become accustomed to, and I was telling this to the guys who helped me out yesterday, one thing that I've become accustomed to is when you're using these lights, don't get lazy. And I had to really tell this to myself, don't be lazy and just leave them running at full tilt while you're setting up gear or in between sets, turn them off or just with the touch screen, it's easy. Just take it down and take it down to 1% or zero, whatever. That'll really help conserve battery life. I will say this. When you're using them in flash mode, it's the battery life is again ridiculous. Um, so if you're looking for an option that you can go out and shoot and use these in flash mode, um, then you're not going to have any problems. Yesterday we shot with the Neo three for three hours or something uh, in flash mode. Never changed the battery, um, and that was awesome. And we I must have done at least, and I'm I must have done at least seven eight hundred shots just with the Neo three. So, um, and never even came close to changing the battery on it. So just keep that in mind. Same thing with the AOS too. You're going to get a lot of just, just really awesome battery life out of these lights when you're using them in flash mode. And just keep in mind too, if I am, that's one way, just thinking about from a, an efficiency standpoint, one way to really create beautiful light, but also to um, be able to modify it more is if you're in a condition like this, <laughs> where you put back to these modifiers, if you put the Neo three in a big modifier, let's say this room is brighter with Danya. If this room is brighter, um, I'm going to, and I'm not getting enough output in continuous mode. Okay, we got another, we got another, we got another person who, who's not muting himself. Um, if you're doing this, then what you're going to want to do is um, fire it in flash. If you fire it in flash, it's really going to give you you the ability to get more out of the light. But even more importantly, it's going to give you the ability to make your light last without going through batteries. So um, again, if, if you don't want to spend a ton of money on batteries, then um, shoot a lot in flash mode. If you do plan on shooting a lot in continuous mode, um, you are going to need more batteries. That's just a, a fact. But uh, for the power that it, that it outputs, it's it's, in my opinion, very, very worth it. So one thing that you guys should know is that um, one thing that you guys should know is that um, it's not a sales pitch. It's just the truth. If you guys um, and I, I'm not, not trying to speak out of turn here, but if you guys are going to use these lights and if you want to get these lights, if you're not buying them as part of the Kickstarter, um, if you're not doing that, then guys, then what you're um, what you're going to do is um, you're going to miss out. Because these lights, you know, distributors are buying them, people are buying them. Um, if you're not getting these lights as part of the Kickstarter, um, then we want you to be able to get these lights whenever it's feasible for you to do so. Um, but if you're not getting these lights as part of the Kickstarter, just understand that it's a, it's very realistic. You may not see these lights 
in your hands to be able to use them for, you know, eight months. I don't know. <laughs> like it really could be a long time. First dibs are going to the folks who go on the Kickstarter. So people have asked, you know, well, what, what am I pledging for when I do the Kickstarter? You're not pledging for anything from really the lights. That's really what it is. And so when it boils down to the Kickstarter, if you're not getting in on the Kickstarter, you know, I put in a recent video saying, hey, there'll be something on Jason Lanier offers. Yeah, eventually they'll there will be, but not anytime soon. So um, just don't take it as, hey, there's going to be an infinite supply. That's just not the case. So if you do indeed want these lights, especially at discounted rates, uh, the Kickstarter is the way to go. And uh, you'll see that 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 uh, bear out. It's not a sales pitch, guys. If you really want the lights, then, you know, try to get on the Kickstarter if it's if it's something that's uh, that's possible for you to do. All right, guys, so now I'm going to open up the questions and answers. So um, I hope this has been uh, beneficial for you. Um, but let me know what questions you have. Uh, you can either type them in the chat. I'm going to um, uh, stop sharing and uh, and go from there. But that but, uh, you know, what questions do you guys have? I want to answer any questions that you guys have. And and Rod can chime in as well. Uh, but we want to be able to uh, to do what. Um, what we can do. The Neo 3 looks like it'll be killer for wedding receptions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Neo 3 would be absolutely um, awesome for wedding receptions. Wedding receptions, um, I just, here's the thing. If I if I was going to shoot a wedding, I would do, um, I would take an AOS 2 and an Neo 3 with me. And I would use the AOS 2 for the, the couple portraits, the uh, group portraits. Um, you know, a question I got recently was, what would you do for group portraits for weddings? Um, really my ideal setup for group portraits would be two AOS twos. I'd have one on the left and one on the right. Um, there's been a lot of questions about the mounting bracket. Are you able to speak on it? Ease of use setup, et cetera. I haven't used the, the mounting bracket yet, so I can't speak to that. Once I'm able to use that, then I'll be able to do, do so. Um, you know, Rod, if you want to talk about the mounting bracket, by all means, go ahead, brother. Um, and yeah. then, um, uh, yeah, go ahead, Rod. Yeah. So we, we have, um, we've been one of the things jason asked us for for a long time and said hey you guys really need to make these things work with um work with bone modifiers and so um we have two different brackets that we're working on right now we're just finalizing the designs we've actually posted the images into the kickstarter and also into the road light user group so you can see uh, how the current design is looking but basically in essence it mounts one design mounts to the bowen's s mount the actual sort of plastic holder itself um the beauty with that is that you know Everything else, the speed ring, the bowings, the metal part that goes and clips into the S mount is unaffected. And you have a piece of metal that comes through the middle uh, and goes straight into your modifier. So um, depending on what your modifier is inside, there's some um, pop-up modifiers, like Jason's got some of these where uh, you can put it right in front of the light. Um, this bracket is designed to work with the majority of modifiers, so long as the spokes are not in the way of where the light would actually be. Um, but um, most of the ones we've tested so far look really good. We also have a speed ring adapter that will take a standard speed ring that will work with so far we've tested it with interfit uh, pro photo photix um and it just mounts right on the front of the uh, speed ring adapter and gives you a little l bracket and a quarter 20 so you can put a neo or an aos uh, on there we will be publishing more information about that um, i know people have been asking us will we have an elincron version um, we are actually looking at a mount at the moment that it looks like it should be universal between bowen's s1 s2 and elincron um, but we will be publishing more information about that um, very shortly. And we're working on that with Jason right now. Yeah. And then another question is, could you talk more about the electronic diffusion? Um, that's another product that I haven't, I mean, I've used the electronic, the smart soft diffusion on the, uh, the Titan lines, which I love. <laughs> so I smile. Um, but the, I haven't used it yet on the AOS two, but in essence, what it does and the rod again, you can chime in my man, but in essence, what it does is it, it, it goes right onto the front and then there's a plug on the bottom of the AOS 2 that you plug the uh, Smart Soft Diffusion right into the bottom of the AOS 2 to power it. And so what it's doing is giving you the ability to really, uh, you know, modify that light right at the, uh, the, the source of the light. And one question I got yesterday from somebody helping me was, 
well, if you put the, which would you prefer the dome or the smart soft? And I said, well, I'd love both, but I know I'm, you know, I'm very spoiled in that way. But the difference between the smart soft is, is it's going to give you the ability to choose the amount that you want to be able to modify the light versus the dome, which is, it's just one, you know, it's, it's just one level of modification. So you want to speak about that, Rod? Yeah, well, what's also what's also cool, and that's that's right, Jason. What's also really nice about it is that um, with the new Rotolite app, you can control the diffusion wirelessly. So if you are doing a wedding uh, ceremony and you don't want to have to get away and adjust the light, you can just you know as as the ambient light conditions are changing through the day, it gets more cloudy or overcast. You can adjust that right from your phone. So um, it's a really cool modifier. Yeah, and it's funny because something I've always spoken about in my uh, in when I've spoken about something like wedding photography is putting the AOS or it used to be Innova Pro, but you know, I don't need the Innova Pro 2 anymore because I have the AOS 2, <laughs> but putting, uh, putting that on the dance floor and, and shining that, you know, for, to illuminate like a first dance or daddy daughter dance or something like that. Um, I could imagine, if, I could imagine if it was too much that it would, it'd be awesome if I just had the app ready to go on the phone and I'm like, you know, take it down a little bit. And that would be one area where the smart soft diffusion would be, you know, would be fantastic. So. I've got a couple more um, questions you in here, Jason, uh, on the YouTube chat. So Adam has said, um, if I'm shooting a wedding and I have the battery connected, uh, do I have the option of having wall power uh, and will it charge the battery? So we do have power supplies for all of these lights. Um, we decided a standard with the Neo to include the battery instead, because that was one of the feedback Jason had for us and others to say, hey, give people the battery. That's much more useful for people. So we've made the power supply uh, an additional accessory and given you the battery instead, but you can use the battery. Um, sorry, you can use the power supply. It won't charge the battery, uh, Adam, but the batteries are USB-C rechargeable. Um, so you could just charge it right from a power bank or something like that whilst you're plugging it into mains. And Jason, people are asking, how does, how does the power compare? You, I mean, you, you shot with Neo 2 and AOS 1 more than anyone else. How, how, how would you describe the increase in power for people and how much more power do you get in flash? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the power difference is huge. Um, and, you know, guys, I, I just got to tell you one thing that the, the marriage between Rod and I is, is, a, is a marriage that is beneficial for you guys because Rod thinks about all these beautiful features and he thinks about power too, but I'm just like, photographers, give me power, baby. And so, like I said, you know, I, and I told him this and I've said it to him, it, none of the features will matter if it's not powerful. And I said that to him. And so, you know, please don't fly me all the way over to England if these lights don't output a lot of light. And so from a, from, you will notice a, a, a huge difference between the Neo 2 and the Neo 3. Um, and, you know, that's why I've been working nonstop. Literally, I've been filming videos, two, three, four videos a week right now to try to answer these questions. Because honestly, guys, if you're watching this, I want you guys to know that, you know, this is what you can do with these lights. I'm not going to oversell them or undersell them. I'm just going to tell you what they can do. From a power standpoint, comparing these, you know, the, the AOS 2 is, is at, it's, it's right there with that Nova Pro 2, which is ridiculous. And the Neo 3 is about the same power as the AOS 1. So if you look at the output from these lights, it's really phenomenal. Uh, and uh, especially from a flash standpoint, again, if, if you saw the slides earlier, that's why I tried to share those as much as I could. If you look at those slides earlier, it really shows that even in daylight conditions, uh, you can get a lot, a lot, lot, lot out of these lights. Keep one thing in mind, though. I'm just, I can't stress this enough. I don't care if you're shooting Rotolite or another light. Um, you still need to use proper lighting um, uh, techniques. And so, you know, you're, you're, you're always, when you go outside in the sun, I don't care if I'm shooting with a traditional light or a Rotolite. When you're shooting with a traditional light and it's very sunny outside, you don't face your subject with the sun in their face. It makes no sense. They can't even see. So you're always, and you want rim light. So the, you know, that's the pictures that you saw that I posted earlier were of exactly that. So uh, just use proper techniques when you're going outside and you're going to get beautiful results, no matter what lights you use, but uh, you know, use proper techniques with these lights um, and you'll get, you'll get the results that you want, but power output standpoint, um, you know, I, there's, there's going to be very little 
uh, very few scenarios where the AOS2 won't do everything that I want. Uh, from anything indoors, um, the Neo3 will be able to handle it from any uh, from a flash standpoint. If it's it, you know, if you provide any diffusion or anything of that nature with the Neo3, you'll be able to get flash results outside as well. Just keep in mind that you know, um, you know, use 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 proper lighting techniques, guys. Then you know, nine times out of ten, when we don't get what we want in the world of photography, I don't care if it's lights or cameras, it's user error. That's just the truth. <laughs> Jason, one question we've had a, um, a lot from people is people who've already bought the Neo2 or AOS1, you know, how could they incorporate them in a, in a multi-light setup? You know, would it work nicely mixing an AOS2 with an AOS? Maybe you could talk a little bit about how, how you could imagine someone might do that. Yeah, actually, if you think about the cowboy shoot that we did, you know, where we lit up the whole saloon, when people say, oh, this is a bummer, I just bought AOS1 or I just bought this, um, you guys, the lights are still great. They still work. <laughs> and so like that saloon, for example, if you had a couple AOS1s, you could, like I said, those, the AOS1 is on par with the Neo3 from a power output standpoint. And so you could easily use the AOS1s for ambient lighting, for, uh, for other lighting. You could pair a Neo3. Just think about it this way. You could pair a Neo3 with an AOS1. That's similar output standpoint. You could use one as a rim and one as a key light. Um, I, that's the way I would approach it is, is look at how these lights pair up. In fact, if you paired an AOS1 with a Neo3, you're getting similar output from a lighting standpoint, but the spread on an AOS1 is going to be wider be simply because it's a wider light. And so um, you could easily use these in tandem, one with another. Um, uh, but I would maybe that's a video we do, Rod. Is I you know I go out with the Neo two and an AOS one and pair them up with these guys. So people because it is it is easy to get disappointed and you're like oh my gosh I have all these lights but those lights still work, and um, and you can use them. It's just understanding that the biggest differential between these lights and their predecessors. Yes, the features are phenomenal, but it's the power. I just the power's a huge game changer on these lights. So, Jason, we've had a question um, from YouTube saying, uh, "How could I do high speed sync with a Godox uh, X1T?" I mean, the answer is very simple, but you can maybe just talk them through that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's we've covered this, and it's a great question. But uh, from a Godox standpoint, you just put the transmitter on the top of your camera and then you put a receiver and connect it to the PC sync port on the back of the light. The, uh, the big difference is you won't be able to control color or a, a power output like you would remotely with the Ellen Chrome Skyport transmitter, but, uh, but you could absolutely fire it. Just, you just need a PC cable to be able to connect to the back of the light. And that's another question that people have asked that, are you using the same Skyport transmitter? Yep. If you look in my bag, it's the same scratched up Allen Chrome Skyport transmitter that I've been firing. The Neo 2s and the AOS 1s and the Nova Pro 2s and the Titans, it's the same thing. And, you know, if, if Rod changed the transmitter for the new lights, I'd be really angry with him because uh, that, that would be a move that Apple would do. And so <laughs> I actually love this because, no, it's the same transmitter. So what, what we're trying to do is create an ecosystem of lights and that way, you know, you can still use the, the the older lights and incorporate these new ones. And Rod, I want you to talk real quick about the bridging of the lights, because I think that's a that's a really cool thing. When you talk about the Neo2 and the AOS1, bridging these lights together with the old ones can can really do some cool stuff. So talk about that real quick. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we've got a brand new dedicated road to light iOS and Android native app. They both come out at the same time. So as soon as these lights ship, the app will be immediately available. You can control up to 20 lights in four groups uh, simultaneously. But one thing that's really cool is, so there's a brand new Bluetooth and Wi-Fi wi chip inside the Neo3 AOS2. Now, the older road lights didn't have that chip. Um, but what we've done to bring the older customers up to speed with the new app is to say, if you incorporate just one Neo3 or AOS2, that will talk Wi-Fi Bluetooth to your phone. And then it takes that signal and it uses the flash chip, the Ellenchrom chip inside the light and it retransmits it to the older lights that do have the Ellenchrom chip. And then suddenly your Neo2, your AOS1s all appear on the app as individually controllable lights, as well as your Titans. So that's a really nice thing. The app is totally free of charge. Um, and, and just to respond to one of the questions we've had on, on YouTube as well about, about uh, controlling the lights wirelessly. So someone said, can you change 
the RGB with the LNCOM trigger? The answer is no. So what you can control on the LNCOM trigger is color temperature, um, continuous power, uh, and flash duration. But don't forget you have the app. So if you want to control RGB or filters or whatever, you just go onto the app. You've got a color wheel. We've actually got a feature coming on the app. This I haven't even told Jason about this yet, but it's super cool. Is you press one button and you can sample a color. So let's say you had a, a, court, a commercial client like Ferrari who has a certain shade of red that they want the color to be. You just take a photograph of it and it picks the red and then that will be the red on the road to light. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's a really cool feature. Yes. So I think, you know, again, so many of us, almost all of us nowadays are on our smartphones. So it's really fun to be able to do that through the transmitter. But once we all get hooked on the app, I, I just think like everything else, we'll just be going like crazy on the phone and manipulating it. And I can't stress enough how cool that is that the app, if you own just one of the new AOS 2 or Neo 3s, the fact that that's going to enable you to communicate with your older lights um, you know, the Neo twos and the AOS ones and the Nova Pro twos. I think that that's a really cool feature. So if you are an existing Rotolite user and you've, you have those older lights, um, you know, it's, it's a way to, like Rod said, to bring you, uh, as, as much as possible into the, the new technology as well. So I think that that's really cool. And just one question I, I know people ask you, I've seen it online a bit, but if you were going to kind of Put together your favorite kit if you're going to travel you don't have like 15 bags you can take with you what's going to what's going to be your kit your go-to kit <laughs> if i if, if i'm really if i'm really trying to pare down it'd be at least it'd be two aos twos and a neo three i don't even know where to be honest i don't even know where that fits on the kickstarter i don't know uh if it does but um but it would be two Neo three, two uh, AOS twos, and a Neo three, um, and that would give me a three light kit. Um, the portability of the Neo three, and sometimes guys, it's just nice. I, the, if you look at the cowboy shoot that we did, um, one reason that I, you know, people would say, well, why wouldn't you just run around with AOS twos all the time? Which you know, if you have that luxury, that'd be an awesome thing. But sometimes it's really nice to jam those smaller lights in the places. We were doing the cowboy shoot in the stable where I was recreating that sunset kind of a thing, and uh, the AOS two would have been too much. It wouldn't have actually fit on the shelf where I was rim lighting them, and or it's it's in the way of my shot. Um, another example is we shot a cow the cowboy on the piano, and Rod jammed a Neo three uh, onto the piano behind him. The AOS two would have taken up too much space and it would have shown in the shot. So um, there's, there's those smaller lights. Go, this takes me, this makes me have memories back to when I first started using the original RL 48s interview kit lights. And I was putting them all over the place in abandoned amusement parks and stuff. Just jamming those small lights in places is huge. And so I would always have a Neo three with me. Um, but from a power standpoint, you know, I, I would have at least two AOS twos. And that, that kit that you mentioned, Jason, just so people are aware, actually, um, we actually do have that as a kit. So we call that the premium gold bundle. And so basically you get an AOS 2, AOS 2, two light kit with, uh, you actually get the domes with it, which is really nice, the stands, battery and a charger, uh, power supplies bag, and then you also get a single Neo with the dome as well. So that's the gold bundle. Um, okay, that's a really nice package. Just so people uh, know also this, and a lot of people have been asking about batteries and you touched on this earlier. So we had the standard 95 watt hour battery, but we also have larger capacity. Vlogs if people do want to run two or three hours. So we have a 155 and we've actually announced on Kickstarter an upgrade. So when you go into manage my pledges, you can upgrade the V mount batteries from 95 to 155. And that will give you an additional 45 minutes of runtime. Um, that's, and, the, and it's 30 pounds per battery. That's a, that's a no brainer to be honest with you. Um, if you wanted a battery that you don't even have to worry about, there's a, we also have a 310 battery that would run the AOS 2 for two and a half hours at 100% power. Um, so you what's the difference that. on that, Rod? Um, I need to double check, but I think it's around 125, something like that. Yeah. I, I, again, guys, I know money doesn't grow on trees, um, but these lights do use a lot of battery power. So if you, you know, if you have the ability to upgrade, um, if I, let me just put it this way. If I was buying these lights and I had the ability to upgrade, um, it's going to be worth it. Um, because the battery, 
it, it draws a lot of power guys. It really does. So if you plan on using these a lot in continuous mode, like I said earlier, you're going to want the, the larger batteries. You just are. So that's just keeping it real with you guys. All right, guys. Well, let us know your last final questions because I know um, Jason uh, probably fancies getting some sleep today. It's pretty early for him. Um. <laughs> well, the Titan, here's a question. Will the Titan X1 work with the app without one of the new lights? So the answer is no. So the Titan does not have the same Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip inside it, but because we wanted to make sure Titan customers feel the love also, um, all you need to do is have a Neo 3 or AOS 2 turned on and the new app will work with uh, the Titans. The Titan does already work with some off the shelf apps though by itself. So you could use Luminaire. Um, right now it's available in the app store um, with the chip that Titan does have in it. Uh, or you could use wireless DMX. So Titan's got wireless DMX capabilities. So a gaffers control or rat pack control or a blackout app would work with Titan just straight um, with no hardware needed. Um, you're reading questions on YouTube, which is great. I'm reading them on Zoom, so we can kind of tag team. Would three of the Neo 3s make good headshot, se a headshot setup a la Peter Hurley? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Is this to answer the question? I mean, Peter almost shoots exclusively. Well, I shouldn't say that, but a lot of this, his work I've seen, he's done a lot of indoor work. And so, um, yeah, it absolutely would. Absolutely. Guys, I, I, I one thing that was so fun yesterday was watching – it's, it's always fun to watch the models when you bring out these lights because they're not used to seeing lights like this. And so they're used to shooting with other photographers, but they're used to, it's always fun to hear their comments when they see the, the roto lights come out. And when we started just changing the RGB yesterday, the model's like, wow, this would normally take the photographers ever to change the filters and to do this and to change the gels. And just being able to, you know, like I showed in the presentation, take that light and just move it to whatever color. And then all, all of a sudden we go from red to blue to yellow to whatever, just it, it starts to expand what you can do creatively, which I think is super fun. And imagine if you're in a corporate headshot environment or, or any shot of a sort of a studio environment, just the ability to be able to change your background instantaneously. Because if you have a neutral background like a gray, you just pump light into the back of it, flash it, and you can change that color backdrop instantaneously, which, which is awesome. And so um, just keep that in mind, uh, you know, when you're doing this. And that's it's another application by using the by using the RGB in the flash. Still the question on the comparison between softbox and clip on dome and the clip on dome, please. Um, well, the, the, the more distance you put between your, your, your light source and the modification, the bigger the modifier, no matter what it is, the bigger the modifier that you use, the softer the light it's going to produce. That's just physics. So, um, you know, that's why if you, you know, if you look in the presentation that I did, it really helps to be able to um, have that light stretch. So um, that dome is going to be used when you don't want to carry a big modifier and you don't want to mess around with stuff. And that dome is going to be used um, when you um, are in a brighter condition. If you're, in a, if you're in a darker condition and you want to spread the light wider, then you would use a bigger softbox. Is the Bowens adapter also compatible with Ellen Chrome system or is it better to use the standard? So the, the mount that we're looking at currently, um, we think will be compatible with Ellen Chrome, but we're not ready to announce that just yet. But I think it's looking 90% likely that it is. Um, at the moment, we know it definitely works with the Bowens S1 mount um, and we're working on trying to make it as universal as possible. So I'd say stay tuned on that one. We will announce that shortly. If you follow the user group, we'll keep you guys posted. But the intention is to try and make it as universal as possible. Unfortunately and annoyingly, everyone has totally different mounts um, and it's very frustrating, but trying to find something that works universally, we're almost, we've almost cracked that. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, yeah, and as, and as soon as, as soon as that gets done, guys, I'll get one and I'll put out a video to try to help show you guys what you can do with it. We had a question, Jason here, and did you guys make any changes to the cases? So yeah, the answer is yes. So um, the, belt pouch that comes with the Neo 3 has been uh, amended, so it's a little bit bigger. It will also take the light with the diffusion dome. Uh, we've got away with the AA pockets. There's now a pocket for the NPF uh, batteries and still for your smartphones, that's nice. On the AOS 2 light kit bag, it's also been uh, adapted, so it's a little bit bigger so that you could take uh, two AOSs with diffusion domes mounted and stands in the bag. Um, and uh, that's a really nice uh, update on those as well. If mixing strobes with continuous in a situation with one Godox strobe, 
one AOS2 and two NEO3s. Is a PC sync receiver needed for each rotolite? Well, yeah, because you would need to be able to um, you would need to be able to communicate to each light. So you know you need you would need a receiver on each one if you're strobing with a Godox transmitter. Will it work with the barn doors? The answer is yes. So all the previous um, accessories still fit. Um, so although it's completely brand new uh, tooling design, the actual outer diameter on both lights is identical. So, um, and the mounting holes are in the same positions for exactly that reason. We didn't want people to have to go and rebuy everything. So the barn doors fit the soft, the previous soft boxes that went on top of the barn doors, they still fit, um, you know, which is really nice. So yeah, that's all still compatible. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, they're really great. They're really, really great products. Um, I really am very excited about them. And uh, like I said, uh, you're good. You, I, I don't know if, if this is one of the videos we've, we've released yet or is yet to be released. There's so many, there's so many things coming out so fast right now. But um, and I, I mentioned that Rotolite has to earn my, uh, you know, my approval of their products every time. It's not just a given. And you know, and and I think that that's important. That that they strive to continually improve what they do. And I, and I love that. And they listen. I just, I love companies that listen to their customers and uh, Rod is really listening to try to make it. Um, and, and all of his family and the great team at Rotolite, they're really listening to try to make this something that, that works for everybody. And one thing that I love is that, you know, anyone who's an older generation Rotolite user, we're trying to give new products, but also, like we've done with the bridging of the, the chips, like we're doing with the accessories still fitting from old to, to, to these ones. We're trying to make it to where if you've already bought Rotolites, this is adding to your Rotolite family. It's not discarding the old stuff. And, and I think that that's really important. And we'll definitely put out, I'll definitely put out a video that shows using the older stuff with the new stuff. And I think that it'll, it'll really encourage a lot of people out there to see how you can get more out of the new stuff and do some really cool stuff with it, but you can still, you know, produce great, uh, you know, imagery with, uh, with used incorporating the older lights as well. And just from our side to say a big thank you to Jason today for giving, giving his time and uh, for all the amazing videos we've all enjoyed watching over the past, you know, um, four or five weeks, uh, many more to come. And, and we're going to be announcing with Jason uh, very shortly, some events all over the world. So, uh, stay tuned on that. Where do they go, Jason, to find out about those events that we'll announce? Uh, they just go to rotolite.com or jasonlanier.com slash rotolite. <laughs> so we should have those announced, guys, by uh, middle of December is what we're aiming for. Just to So send Jason some messages. You know, Let us put comments in, in the YouTube here of where you want us to come, You know, which cities you want us to come to around the world, and we'll set it up. We'll make it happen. Um, <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll be. And... Uh, just to say, Jason, and then I'll hand over to you, you know, just to remind people, it's literally 24 hours to go, guys. So, um, you know, genuinely, um, sales pitch aside, you get 25% off these lights. If you're in the US and UK, you're saving the sales tax as well. Um, that's an additional saving. So if you were going to do it, there will never be a better time to do it. Um, by also pledging now, uh, you're going to be the first in the world to get them. So it's rotolight.com forward slash Kickstarter, 24 hours to go. I want to say a big thank you also for making this project the most successful, um, successfully backed project on Kickstarter ever for LED lights. I mean, that's that's an incredible um, achievement and we couldn't have done it without you guys. So we're really incredible, incredibly grateful for all of your support and uh, you know uh, for, sh for telling people about this. And, and again, thanks to Jason for everyone for tuning in today. Hey, thank you. And Rod, I really look forward to doing those events. And it's funny when you said the events, something that just immediately went into my mind is, what you got, I, I'm not saying that this is necessarily the best thing to do, but one thing that's great about traveling with the Roto lights is I literally just put them in my suitcase and uh, I wrap them up around clothes or whatever else. And I don't have to take all the modifiers. It, it really is like a really cool way to use the lights. And so uh, I just absolutely, absolutely love them. And Rod, what, I mean, if they don't get on the Kickstarter, I mean, how long are they realistically looking at before having access to lights i mean are we talking a long time yeah we are talking a long time um i mean you know we've sold an incredible number of them so i think realistically um you're probably looking at may june at the earliest if you've if you're not going to back the kickstarter um but the kickstarter will be shipping no later than march um you know we we're actually doing i have to say 
you know, off the record that we're doing extremely well on the AOS production. So I think we're likely to announce some good news that it may ship earlier. I don't want to over promise, but I, I think it's looking highly likely that will be the case. So, but again, it's only going to ship earlier for those guys who are back in Kickstarter. So, um, yeah. And I'm just sharing that because I know people are going to, they're going to assume that this is a sales pitch and it's not, it's, it, 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 that's just what it is. And so if you want to get on it, guys, this is your chance. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks Rod for, uh, for being uh, awesome and, and making so much of this happen. And uh, thanks to you guys at home for watching. We couldn't do this without you. And uh, how about a free light for each attendee? <laughs> ben, you know, I love you and that's never happening. Yeah, we'll give you a free light with a $2,000 entrance fee. All right, guys, <laughs> that's a joke. Until next time, keep shooting. Never give up on your dreams. Find out together works for you. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.